How you guys doing? My name is Philip Anglade, and I'm actually from New York. Um, I moved down to Florida when I was actually young, about like a year, year and a half, or something like that. And at that point in time, my mom, she was she was going through some fi financial stuff. Like I've never met my father before. And, and mind you, you're actually going to hear this story a little bit more in depth at, when you actually get into the course itself. I'm thinking I'll just give you a little snippet, but it was just me and her. We came down here, and and we were on welfare. I put it to you straight like that. Like we didn't have anything. My mom started out from scratch. You know, we were going from house to house, from family member's house to family member's house. And I was a kid, so I didn't know that, you know, like we were uh, broke, but more than broke. My mom actually had to find work. And when she was actually looking for work, she had to work extra hours. And with working those extra hours, you know, she couldn't just have me be at a daycare because she couldn't even afford it. So she actually flew me to Haiti. And um, I'm at, so I don't know if you know this, but I'm actually Haitian. Um, I'm Haitian and Italian. And, you know, I stayed there for, for about six months, probably even longer than that. And to have her get up like on her feet. But when I actually came back, it got to the point where I started to realize like, man, like we're actually, you know, having it tough. Just imagine every single month, like, you know, on the first of the month, you're going to walk in and there's not going to be any lights. Like, you know it. That's just how it goes. And I just knew that what's going to happen is I'm, gonna have to go to the cabinet I'm gonna have to you know get the flashlight I'm gonna have to get the you know the candle to be able to uh, boil some water something like that so I'd be able to take a you know hot bath um, and be able to eat and that's 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 how I remember growing up so just imagine that like that's what I remember I remember playing Monopoly with my mom to do something because there's no lights there's nothing that we could be able to do I remember um, playing with these Beyblade things because that those are the only toys that I you know, she could be able to afford. I remember one of my Christmas, um, my mom, she built up and built up and built up that she was gonna get me like this, you know, really cool toy. And, and it was a toy that came from, I think it was like Burger King or something like that. And that's all, man, that, that really is. That's all that, um, that she could be able to, to, uh, to give. And I always said to myself, you know what? No matter what it takes, I'm gonna make sure that I could be able to provide in the best way possible. And believe me, my mom did everything that she could. She, she, she provided an amazing life um, for me as far as like what I've experienced. But what I started to realize is, and especially not having a father figure in my life or just any father or anything like that, I started to realize like, man, um, I wanna make sure if I have a child that I'm there for them no matter what is the case. I'm going to make sure, no matter what, that I could be able to provide for them and I could be able to really, really give them everything that is imaginable. Not, not do for them, but be able to provide a certain direction so that they could be able to really grow up in the best way. Now, what I started to realize over time is money is important. So my mom, she told me, hey, listen, if you ever want to become successful, you got to become an engineer. Now, becoming an engineer means I would have to go out and, you know, get a job and stuff like that. And you know, nothing wrong with jobs. It's just the fact that when my mom was going to work, I'd be away from her for 8 to 10 to 12 hours per day because she had to be able to provide. So I just thought that that's how life was. I just thought that that's just how life is going to be. And I actually went to a high school for engineering. And then through that school, I actually got a full ride scholarship to actually go to college for engineering as well. And I was doing very well. And then I actually got introduced to the world of sales and the world of marketing. And my, my focus kind of veered off a little bit. And I started to realize like, I kind of like this. One, because like, the like there's no cap on the amount of income that you can be able to create and I, I really like that and I again I always wanted to provide in a big way but not only just that but I saw that there were thousands of people out there that were going through financial issues just like how my mom was and I didn't want to be in that situation and I hated seeing other people in that situation so I've always wanted to be able to like help and be able to do something like big you know for other people and what happened was I, I, I actually started getting pretty good at it. 
I started making some good money at it, in it. But when, when, over time I started to realize like, man, not everybody's winning at this. Not everybody's earning the same amount of income. And it just got to me where I would ask my leadership like, man, okay, you know, I'm doing well, but how can I be able to help others? How can I be able to get them to, to a higher point? And they said, listen, it's either they're gonna put in the work or they're not, and you're just gonna have to leave them and you know, go find somebody else. And I just couldn't get that in my head to be okay. I can't just leave somebody. You know, so I was like, man, I don't know if I can keep doing this anymore. I can't keep on sharing a vision and sharing something that I don't believe in anymore. So I literally had to stop. Now, understand, at that point in time, I didn't have to work. Everything was coming through residual income. So I, I, was, I was good. But literally, at that point in time, I realized, man, if I stop doing this, I'm going to have to go back to work. But when I decided that, it was literally at the wrong time. Because the thing is, I just had my daughter. And now going back to what my mom went through, where she was going through financial issues. Now I'm going through financial issues. And I have a daughter that's young, that needs stuff. So I need money. So I had to go to work. But then I'm in the same hole where it's like, man, I have to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. When I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, she's asleep. I got to go into traffic for about an hour, hour and a half, which I despise traffic. <laughs> Either way, I have to go into a traffic for an hour, hour and a half, go into a place I really don't want to be at, deal with people I really don't really want to deal with, and then go back into that traffic and then come home. But then by that time, I'm tired. And then Amy's about to go to sleep. And it just made me feel like, like, oh, uh, I need the money, but I want to spend time with her as much as I can. And I just didn't want the same thing to happen between me and my mom, where my best friend was a television, to be the same thing for her. I wanted to make sure that I could be able to be there, but also be able to provide. So literally, I asked a friend of mine, hey, listen, what else are you doing for income? He said, hey, listen, I'm actually doing this thing called Forex. I'm like, Forex, what is that? You know, I've heard about that, but... You know, like, I, I, I don't know, because like I've, I've gotten into, into stocks before. I've, I've done that before. I've made, I've made, you know, a good amount of money, but it was only 100% in a year. And when he told me the, um, the amount of money that he was making, I'm like, bro, you got to be kidding. Like, are you for real? So I asked him, like, yo, you got to teach me. You got to teach me right now. He's like, listen, like, I, I, I can't teach you, but you got to find a mentor. And... Like, I am, like I'm going to say in the actual course itself, you know, maybe you've now found your mentor. Because what I've realized is this world of Forex, once you know the rules, it's a wrap. And what I'm going to be putting in this course are the rules. The way that I actually got into teaching and stuff like that was literally just by mistake. I was, I was getting into trades for myself. I actually learned how to trade before I got started with, with this, with the, with this uh, past company. And what happened was I started to realize, like, man, you know, I'm actually doing pretty good with this. My second day made $1,000 in that second day and never looked back. It's just been crazy. So when a friend of mine contacted me about another organization that teaches people how to trade, you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm okay, like I'm good. But then I started to realize and see in the organization, man, there's some people that really have, need, need some help. And they're asking some questions that I think I know about. So, you know, I, I asked him, I was like, hey, I'm curious. What if I, you know, did a training you know, on a Sunday or something like that? And I think Naib was there. Probably a couple of you guys was there on my first actual, you know, training. And I forgot exactly how many people were there, but... It grew from like 20 people to 40 people to 60 to 50, you know, it would go up and down and then it kept on growing, probably like eight hours. <laughs> See, I was giving my all, I was like, oh, and I don't even know what I was doing. I did my best, <laughs> you know, and, um, and um, you know, it grew to over a hundred and I'm like, oh, like, this is cool. Like I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, th these people are actually being helped. I thought it was so cool. And then I started to get requested to go different places. And, you know, I was looking through the chat and, you know, somebody said, you know, the training that you, that you did in, 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 um, in LA, you know, in California. 
So I started getting flown out different places. You know, Dr. K was helping out a lot. And, you know, like, I, believe me, if, if at any point in time Dr. K hears this, sees this, I, I thank God for every single day. No matter what, I thank God for every single day, seriously. Um, and, you know, she, she gave me a platform. She gave me, um, like, a new vision that I could be able to, to really do something big. And then after that, I got invited to come to Atlanta. And I was like, man, like 300 people in a room. And I'm teaching them this world, this amazing world of Forex. And in my mind, I'm like, man, like, I can really do this. You know, I can really, really do this. And I don't know, it just changed the game for me. Ever since then, everything's been different. Especially when I got invited to come out to Australia. And um, that's when it really blew up because I'm like, man, I'm now doing this all over the world. Like, bro, you have no idea between that time frame how many times I was saying thank you, 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 thank you. And now I'm saying thank you to you guys because you guys are giving me the opportunity to be able to now see you, you know, and be able to actually provide for you. And, you know, like what happened was after the Australia event, people were asking me to come back to Australia or people were asking me to fly out to their cities or their countries or something like that. And what, what happened was I started to realize like, man, in order for me to fly somewhere or in order for somebody to fly to me, I actually have to, like they have to actually pay for the flight. They have to pay for the actual course. And that can take time to be able to save up for that. And I'm like, man, I can't have people waiting. You know, I don't, I'm, I don't believe that's, that's, that's right, you know? So I, I started to realize, like, man, you know, how can I be able to, to do this in a, in a bigger way? So then I thought, well, what if I just recorded my actual in-person course and be able to actually provide it for others? 